Good morning and happy Sunday. I hope everyone is doing well and thank you so much for coming back to this week's episode. I have lit my candle and played a little bit of music. I have my coffee. I'm sure you can hear the birds in the background and I'm kind of just doing my regular Sunday morning thing. I like to come out here and just kind of start very slow into the day before it gets crazy and hectic and I start thinking about all the things on my to-do list. So today I am going to be showing you how to make a Sunday brunch feel just as special at home as if you made reservations and went to a restaurant. So let's take a step back. Back during the pandemic when we were all sheltered in place, we missed hanging out with friends and going out to dinner and going out to brunch and having cocktails. At least I know that I did. At the time, I was living by myself and the introvert in me very much loved being at home by myself, but from time to time, I did miss human interaction. So in order to keep up with friends and with family, I scheduled weekly Zoom happy hours every Friday and what I did before those calls I would post a picture of the cocktail that I was going to drink so I did that for a couple of weeks and people would be like your drink looks delicious but it would be great if we actually saw you making it and I was like okay I could probably do that so you know just using my hands I showed you know how to put the vermouth in how to put in the gin put in the olives and you know in about 30 seconds to a minute I had a video showing people how I made the cocktail and then people started to ask for well why at the end of your video why don't you take a sip of your cocktail and then tell us what you think about it and I was like okay now I'm getting out of my comfort zone because I'm very comfortable behind the camera but now you want me to be in front of the camera and actually say something that to me at the time sounded crazy but I did it and more than likely it looked a little bit like this I would take a sip of my of my cocktail and I would do that <laughs> because I wasn't comfortable um, talking on camera yet so but as time went on people were asking but okay now we need you to say something we need to say here you say it's sweet or it's tart or this is delicious whatever we need to hear your voice and so little by little these videos started to get bigger and bigger and longer and longer what started to be just a picture on Instagram now we're becoming you know three to five sometimes longer minute videos and I think that during that time was the time that I started to get comfortable on the other side of the camera. So today I thought that it would be a really good idea to kind of go back to where it all started. I'm going to be making a cocktail that is super easy and perfect to serve for any breakfast, even on Sundays. And then I'm going to be making a sausage and vegetable quiche with some blistered tomatoes and a little fruit salad on the side. Basically, I just want to share that you don't have to leave your house in order to have a good time. And I think that that was one of the main lessons that I learned during the pandemic is that you can still have a fabulous time in your home, even by yourself. And, you know, sometimes I even would create a Sunday brunch for myself and I would pull out my tablecloths, my favorite dishes, I'd make pancakes, I'd make even a mimosa and just have a great time at home by myself. Sure, I wish I would have been with my friends out to brunch and having a great time, but guess what? I still had a great time and I was at home and it was great. So I look forward to creating this brunch for you today and I really hope that you enjoy it. But before I get started, I do have to go over to the farmer's market to pick up some ingredients. But then when I come back, I will show you how I put everything together. What? You want to come with me? Okay, come on. Let's go. All right, so I am here and I'm hoping to get some strawberries, some scallions or chives, whichever one they have, some eggs, maybe a little goat cheese and some grape tomatoes. So let's see what they have. Oh, fun fact. I used to live in that building right there. Yep. 
So I would come down and I would grab something. More than likely I was, I would grab something for breakfast, but then I also would just pick up some stuff that I would need for either dinner that evening or just throughout the week. And I love doing that. I mean, I love my life now, but there are some things that I miss about my old life and living there and walking across the street to the farmer's market every week is something that I definitely miss. But anyway, let's go see what they have. Thank you. Have a good one. Okay, I picked up just about everything that I needed, plus these, which was not on my list, but how could I say no? <laughs> Gorgeous. Um, I do have to stop by Whole Foods because the mushroom guy was not here, uh, but I was able to pick up everything else. So I'm going to head over to the store, pick up the mushrooms, and then I'll meet you back at home. Let's go ahead and get started with the cocktail only because it has a simple syrup that I need to make in advance so that it has time to chill. I'm going to be making a cocktail that's called Sunday Morning Sunrise Mimosas. It's super easy to make and it's the perfect cocktail to serve for brunch. The ingredients are two cups of fresh strawberries, six oranges, a fourth a cup of sugar, a fourth a cup of water, two sprigs of fresh mint, one third cup of orange liqueur, one cup of freshly squeezed orange juice, and one bottle of Prosecco or Champagne. So let's get into making the simple syrup. In a medium saucepan, combine the strawberries, orange peel, sugar, and water together, and over a medium heat, bring that to a rolling simmer. Once you see that start to boil, reduce the heat to about a medium low and continue simmering for about 20 minutes. During this time, you'll want to mash up your strawberries either with a masher or a wooden spoon until the sugar has completely dissolved and the mixture thickens. Next up, you'll remove the pan from the heat and then you will pour the mixture into a storage container. You'll add in your two sprigs of mint and then set that aside to cool for about 30 minutes. While the simple syrup is cooling, I'm going to go ahead and squeeze several oranges to make some juice. Yes, of course, you can use store-bought orange juice, but since I had several oranges here, I just thought that I would go ahead and make some on my own. I really enjoy making a quiche on a Sunday morning because it really is so easy. Today I'm making a sausage, veggie, and cheese quiche and it really is going to be delicious. So let's get started. So the first step is making our crust and for me instead of using a pastry crust for my quiche I really do like to use shredded potatoes for my base. 
I love these potatoes. They are delicious. Um, I got them from Whole Foods, but I know that they sell this brand at other grocery stores, but they're already seasoned and that's what I really love so much. So don't make the mistake that I did in the beginning by adding salt to them because I promise you that if you add salt to this, it's going to be way too salty. So first up, I will take um, I have some avocado spray and I'll just like to spray the pan just to make sure that the potatoes do not stick. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then in a separate mixing bowl, I like to put the potatoes in. And then add a little butter. and then mix it up a little bit. Next, using clean hands, I'll just take this, these potatoes and just start to press it in to make our base. And now we're going to put this in the oven at 375 degrees for 25 minutes or until golden brown. So while the crust is in the oven, go ahead and saute your sausage. So the sausage is browning up nicely and now I'm going to go ahead and add our veggies to our pan. So I'm adding just a tiny smidge of onion. Mark is not an onion fan, so I'm only gonna add it in just a little bit for flavor, and then I'm gonna add in some red pepper. All right, the sausage is done. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off of the fire and allow our veggies to keep cooking. These are looking good, so I'm going to go ahead and take these off of the fire and allow those to cool. I think it's time to check the crusts and see how that's looking. I actually think that's perfect and ready to come out. So let's go ahead and take that out starting to brown and I don't want it to completely brown because we still have to cook it with the egg mixture inside so I think that looks good. Perfect. Okay so now here is the easy part. In a medium bowl I've added in six eggs and then I also added in salt and pepper. To this bowl you'll add in the veggies, the sausage, and then half of the cheese all of that will go inside and be mixed up here, and then we'll take the rest of this cheese and put it on the top. I'll show you how to do that now. Okay. Now that everything is mixed up, you simply just add the mixture into your bowl. And then just kind of spread it out a little bit. It's looking so delicious. And then finally, you will add in your cheese. I forgot to add something to the quiche. 
you're supposed to add a fourth a cup of heavy cream to it. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of poke some holes in the quiche and add in the cream and, and hope it works. Oh, how did I forget that? All right, let's get back to it. Just mix it in there, I hope. Please work. Alright, I'm going to add just a little bit more cheese just to make it pretty again. <laughs> I should have known better. I saw that mixture and I was like, man, why does this look so dry? And I looked at the recipe and I'm like, aha, the cream. So anyway, this is ready to go back into the oven at 375 for 30 minutes. So let's go. All right, so now that that's in the oven, how about we turn this table into a beautiful tablescape? I love creating beautiful tablescapes because to me it makes even the simplest of meals feel more special. I purchased this gorgeous, vintage, unused round tablecloth from a thrift store and it was only five dollars and I've actually had it in storage for quite some time but for this table and for this occasion I knew that I wanted to pull it out. I then purchased these gorgeous vintage plates last week from Eleanor over at Feast Vintage. I found her over on Instagram a little over a year ago and immediately I realized that she was my kindred spirit because she just sources and sells some of the most amazing vintage items for tablescapes and entertaining. Last weekend I went to the Raleigh Flea Market just to look around. I hadn't been in a while and thought it would be fun to see if I could find any treasures. Unfortunately, I didn't find much but on my way out I spotted this dollar table and found these beautiful glass bowls that I thought would be perfect for so many things. For only one dollar for the set, I scooped them up and today I'm going to use them for the fruit salad and I will also use a couple for condiments and maybe some scallions to put over our quiche. Honestly, as I look around the table, I don't see anything that isn't secondhand. From the glassware to the brass utensils to the wavy bowls that I found at a summer market last year to the brass candlesticks and pitcher the cutting board literally everything on this table is secondhand and I absolutely love that all right now that the table is set I'm gonna go and check the quiche and see how that's doing and then we're gonna go ahead and start making the cocktail Looking good and it smells even better. I'd say another couple of minutes and then this will be ready to come out. So now that the quiche has a little bit more time to bake, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the cocktail. So our simple syrup is now cool and ready to go and I have taken out the orange peel as well as the mint. Next up, you pour about two tablespoons of the simple syrup into each glass. And I like to put in about a half a shot of the orange liqueur into each cocktail. And then next up, you pour in about three tablespoons of orange juice. And 
And then finally, you finish it off with either a Prosecco, a sparkling wine, even champagne. I got this one from Whole Foods the other day, and honestly, <laughs> I really just got it because of its packaging. But let's try it out. And the last step is garnish it with a piece of fruit. Don't tell Mark, but I'm gonna go ahead and try this. I just wanna see what it tastes like before I serve it to him. Oh my God. It is so good. It really is delicious. It is sweet. Oh my gosh, you can taste the strawberries. You can taste the mint. The mint in here is everything. And of course the orange. Oh, mm. Mm. It really is so good. All right, I think she's ready to come out. Come on. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna let her sit for a good 10 minutes or so just to let her gel together. And while she's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the blistered tomatoes. So as a nice little side, I'm gonna make what's called blistered tomatoes. And we actually had these when we were in Pennsylvania a couple of weeks at a restaurant called On Orange and they were just a delicious side to our breakfast, so I thought today I would recreate that. So for the ingredients, we have two cups of grape tomatoes. We'll have uh, two tablespoons of olive oil. We will have two garlic cloves that have been minced, and then we'll also just add in a little bit of chopped fresh basil that we'll put on top once the tomatoes are done. So first we're gonna go ahead and pour in two tablespoons of olive oil. And we're just gonna get that heated up. Next, we're gonna go ahead and add in the tomatoes. And it's important to leave these undisturbed for about two minutes. Make sure that you do not toss them, that you do not poke them, just leave them undisturbed for about two minutes. Next, you'll add in your garlic. Just gonna throw that around. Now you'll wanna go and add in a little bit of salt and pepper. And just let that sit for another minute or two. It's time to take them off. Those are looking delicious. I'm going to go ahead and add a little basil just to kind of top it off and let those flavors kind of fold into there. And there you go. I think it's time to plate our breakfast. Let's go.
Cheers. Cheers. Hmm. I get the strawberry and the orange, but... Do you taste the mint? Ah, mint. That's what it is. Yeah. I love the The mint in here really adds something to it. I really love it. Excellent. Good. Enjoy. What do you think? I think everyone needs a Jessica. Well, lucky you. You have one. <laughs> the perfect bite. Mmm. The tomato with it. Mmm. That's that really is the perfect bite. It's delicious, and I love the potato as the base instead of a pastry. And guess what? <laughs> the cream that I put in there that I kind of mixed in at the end that I forgot. It works. It's really, really good. You guys gotta try this recipe. I say this was a successful brunch. What do you think? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm going to actually sit here and drink the rest of this delicious cocktail while I watch Mark do the dishes. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and I'll see you next week. Cheers. So one thing I do want to mention is that the rest of these strawberries that I made for the simple syrup, they are freaking delicious and you should use them for lots of things. You could put them over pancakes in the morning, you can put them over ice cream, a strawberry shortcake. Do not throw these away. This is like liquid gold right here. You're welcome. <laughs>